welcome to today's session, Unmasking Learner Needs for Engaging E-Learning Experiences. So today we'll talk about engaging e-learning experiences and how to create them for adult learners. So my name is Marina Arshavsky. I have more than 15 years of experience in instructional design and e-learning. Um, my credentials include master's degree in instructional design. I'm also Kirkpatrick's bronze level certified training and evaluation professional. And um, I have actually have won thousands of uh, hundreds, I would say, many, many, many different awards, including the top leaders in education award. Um, and most of these awards uh, were from uh, for, from a uh, private uh contracts and also for some government contracts as well. So I've done a lot of uh, courses over the years. And I'm also the author of the Instructional Design for E-Learning book, um, Essential Guide to Creating Successful E-Learning Courses. And this book is actually now being used by multiple colleges and universities. And I'm also the author of E-Learning Design on a Shoestring book, uh, which will be published in October by ATT. So I just finished the manuscript um, and it's in the process of being published. And I'm also the creator of the Instructional Design Mastery Program. So um, today, e-learning has become a popular way for adults to acquire skills and knowledge, but adults face unique challenges in e-learning environments compared to traditional classroom settings. In a traditional classroom setting, learners may have a dedicated time slot for learning and the instructor's full attention. Adult learners, on the other hand, often juggle work, family, and other commitments. Uh, so they have different responsibilities. They have limited time for learning and prefer to squeeze in short bursts of uh, learning throughout the day. Uh, so what are some of the common challenges that adult learners face in e-learning? It's limited time, uh, short attention spans, diverse um, learning preferences. So adult learners often have busy schedules and they struggle to find large blocks of time for e-learning. In today's uh, fast-paced world, uh, many adults have shorter attention spans and may become disengaged with lengthy e-learning jobs. And adults come from various backgrounds and they have different learning preferences. So understanding all these challenges is crucial for creating effective e-learning experiences that cater to the needs of adult learners. And we'll explore uh, why understanding today's learners is so important in uh, today's uh, lecture or uh, presentation. So uh, if you look at this graph, uh, it actually illustrates the positive correlation between understanding learner needs and achieving desired outcomes in e-learning for adults. So when we take the time to understand adult learners' needs, we can design e-learning that's more engaging, more relevant, and more effective. By addressing their preferences and challenges like short attention spans, we can create engaging content that keeps them motivated to learn. And by aligning learning objectives with their specific needs and goals, the content becomes more relevant and applicable to their work or personal lives. So by catering to their preferences, we can ensure uh, that they retain knowledge more effectively, achieve better learning outcomes. And in essence, understanding adult a learner needs allows us to bridge the gap between what adult learners need and what learning can offer. And this ultimately leads to a more successful and rewarding learning experience for them. So as you can see, an exciting adult a learner's needs, um, it leads to a significant improvement in several key areas. So let's take a closer look at this data. So first, it's improved knowledge retention. When e-learning caters to adult learners' needs and preferences, they're more likely to, to be engaged with the material. So this deeper engagement leads to better information processing and improved knowledge retention in the long run. Also, increased motivation. 
So understanding learner challenges like limited time, short attention spans, allows us to create e-learning that feels manageable and also interesting. And this keeps adult learners motivated to complete the course and continue learning. And then another benefit is better learning outcomes, of course. Ultimately, by addressing adult learner needs, we can design e-learning that is more effective in achieving its goals. Whether it's improving job performance, acquiring new skills, or simply gaining new knowledge, understanding learner needs um, helps us ensure that they walk away with the desired outcomes. So in short, when we take time to understand adult learners' needs, we can create e-learning experiences that are not only engaging, but that uh, also lead to significant improvements in knowledge retention, motivation, and overall uh, learning outcomes, which is exactly what we need as instructional designers. So we established that understanding adult learner needs is crucial for creating learning, e-learning. But what exactly are these needs? So let's talk a little bit about the three different categories that influence how adults approach learning. First, they have cognitive needs. Adult learners are knowledge seekers, but they also want structured learning. They want clear learning objectives, well-organized content, and a logical progression of topics. So all adult learners are highly motivated by practical application. They want to see how the new acquired knowledge applies to their work or professional goals. They value e-learning experiences that provide real-world scenarios and opportunities to practice what they learn. And finally, cognitive needs also encompass the need uh, for relevance to their work. So adult learners are more engaged when they understand how e-learning content will directly benefit them in their uh, current roles or future career aspirations. So now let's move on to effective needs of adult learners. So effective needs deal with the emotional aspect of learning. Adults desire control over their learning pace. They may prefer to learn at their own speed and may have flexibility to revisit the specific topics if needed. Positive reinforcement through feedback and recognition is also very important for adult learners' motivation. They appreciate feedback that, uh, uh, that actually recognizes their progress um, and uh, they they want to see their strengths highlighted. So additionally, adult learners often have a wealth of experience and prior knowledge. So effective e-learning builds upon this existing knowledge base, creating a sense of accomplishment and fostering a more positive learning experience. So that's why you want to really focus on that aspect as well. And then finally, uh, let's explore uh, behavioral needs of adults. So behavioral needs focus on desired outcomes uh, of learning. And adult learners are typically motivated by the desire to improve their job performance. They want e-learning that equips them with the skills and knowledge to excel in their roles. Additionally, adult learners are often problem solvers by nature. They appreciate e-learning experiences that provide opportunities to apply their learning to solve real-world challenges and enhance their problem-solving skills. So looking beyond their current roles, adult learners may also be motivated by the potential to create new career opportunities. So e-learning that equips them with in-demand skills and expands their knowledge base can be highly attractive to them. So by understanding these three categories of needs, cognitive, affective, and behavioral, we can develop e-learning experiences that resonate with adult learners and ultimately lead to a more successful learning journey. So now that we understand these three categories of adult learner needs, let's talk a little bit about the method for identifying specific needs in your target audience. 
So uh, here are three uh, effective methods of needs assessment that I like to use. It's first, it's targeted surveys. Targeted surveys allow us to gather a wealth of information from a large group of, group of potential learners. So we can craft surveys with specific questions that address cognitive, affective, and behavioral needs. So for example, we can ask about the desired course and prior knowledge of the subject matter. Surveys are relatively quick and cost-effective way to uh, gather data, but it's important to ensure the questions are clear, concise, and easy to answer. Also focus group discussions. They offer a deeper understanding of learner needs. So by bringing together a small group of adult learners, they can facilitate a discussion about their challenges, preferences, and learning goals. This allows us to explore their needs in more detail and gain valuable insights um, beyond what a survey can provide. And focus groups are ideal for uncovering shared concerns and uncovering the unexpected needs or um, challenges that may not be readily apparent in the survey. However, they require more time and more resources to organize and to actually conduct them. And the next method, the last one that I'll talk about uh, is skills and knowledge gap analysis. And that involves analyzing data about the skills and knowledge required for a specific job role compared to the current skill set of the target learner. Uh, so this data can come from performance evaluations, industry trends, or job descriptions. So by identifying these gaps, we can tailor e-learning content to directly address the specific knowledge and skills adult learners need to be successful in their roles. And this ensures the e-learning experience is highly relevant and directly contributes to improved job performance. The most effective approach often involves using a combination of these methods. So I never actually use just one single method. I try to use a combination as much as possible. So for example, um, I might use surveys to gather initial data, then conduct focus groups to delve deeper into specific areas of interest. And finally, I might use a skill and knowledge gap analysis to ensure the e-learning um, directly addresses those skill gaps. Okay. So now that we talked about learner needs and how to identify those needs, we can translate this information into actionable insights for uh, designing effective e-learn. So this is where learner personas come in. The learner persona is a fiction character that represents your typical learner within your target audience. It goes beyond demographics and incorporates details about their motivation and challenges. A learner persona template typically includes sections for demographics, so age, job title, uh, education level, and so on. Um, learning goals, what the learners uh, actually hope to achieve through the e-learning experience, challenges, so obstacles the learner faces in their e learning journey, like maybe limited time, like short attention span, um, and preferred learning, uh, if they have like a special learning style, although we don't really talk about learning styles anymore, but if they have any preferences for visual content or if they have preferences for hands-on activities, um, and also the quotes. So including quotes that um, actually represent the learner's voice and perspective can enhance persona. So when we develop the learning personas based on the data gathered from our needs assessment, we can gain deeper empathy for their experiences. So in essence, a learner persona actually bridges the gap between it, it, it. So each learning persona that you create, it bridges the gap between understanding learner needs 
and translating that knowledge into actionable design decisions as you design your courses. Okay. So now let's just talk a little bit about adult learning theories and methodologies. So andragogy or adult learning is an adult learning theory that describes assumptions about the learners. The concept of andragogy was pioneered by Malcolm Knowles. Uh, he's a theorist of adult um, education. He defined andragogy as the art and science helping adults learn. So he identified six principles of adult learning. So according to him, and we talked about many of these principles uh, already um, at the beginning of the presentation, but I'll just go through them very quickly. So adults are internally motivated. Typically, uh, adult learners are satisfied um, with such um, extrinsic motivators as promotions and bonuses. However, satisfying intrinsic motivators such as self-esteem, power, and achievement is equally important to them. As an instructional designer, we should, we should actually aim to create a learning activities that nourish those intrinsic motivators by demonstrating how the new knowledge and skills should would be beneficial for their work, for the work they do. Um, the next one is um, adults are actually, they actually bring life experiences to new learning situations. So most adult learners apply their background knowledge to the new learning that they acquire. Your uh, training activities should reflect the actual work the learners perform and provide exercises, activities that allow learners to apply their prior knowledge and experience to the theoretical aspect of the training. And adult learners are, of course, more oriented, so they must have a need for learning. If an employee is expected to have certain skills and knowledge, the level of interest in your training will be much higher than if the same skill is not required for successful job performance. Um, so providing just-in-time training is very important for the success of the course. Adult learners are relevant to experience. So adult must know the reason for learning, they want to know the benefits of acquiring uh, certain skills and the cost of not acquiring knowledge and skills. So for this exact reason, you should base your courses, or we as instructional designers always base our courses on the intended audience and include all objectives and goals, uh, different goal statements in the lesson plans, in activities, as well as on real uh, work experiences. And of course, adults are practical. Adults have a task-centered orientation to learning. So most school-age children have a subject-centered orientation to learning and focus on the content just to pass the test. Um, also, most children are not interested in retaining the information that they learn in class. The ultimate goal for adult learners, however, is to retain as much information as possible from the training course. So, Adults look for task-centered learning experiences. So if you satisfy this need and develop your courses around problem solving, then adult learners will most likely learn the content with the intention of actually applying it to the job. Your e-learning courses should allow learners to solve problems and perform tasks similar to those that they actually encounter in the job. So this can be done through games, simulations, various problem-solving activities. It's important to avoid information dumping and design activities that focus on practicing the information rather than simply memorizing it. Adults, of course, like everyone else, like children too, adults like to be respected. They like to be self-directing. In other words, they need other people, such as management, to see that they're capable of taking responsibility for themselves. Incorporating search and discovery elements in training courses can address this need. 
young learners may be open to receiving help, helpful guidance or critique from their teachers, but adult learners tend to have a much different perception of their own abilities. So if you doubt this, think about the last time you actually received a crit criticism or somebody criticized you, or if you received guidance from a manager, or team member, how did you react to it? So when you see adult learners struggling to understand new concepts or failing to quickly grasp a new training topic, but your intention as an instructional designer should be implemented appropriately. But, um, Tactically, of course. So adult learners prefer to take charge of their learning journeys. They appreciate e-learning experiences that cater to self-directedness. And here's how e-learning can empower self-directedness. Use modular content. So we want to break down content into smaller to adjustable modules. That allows learners to focus on specific areas of interest and learn at their own pace. Also on-demand access. E-learning platforms offer the flexibility to access learning materials anytime, anywhere, accommodating their busy schedules. And we want to use choice and customization. So consider offering optional learning pathways or allowing learners to choose the order in which they complete modules to cater to uh, individuals' uh, needs and preferences. So in addition to self-directedness, uh, adult learners benefit from experiential learning. So they learn best by doing and applying knowledge to real world situations. And here is how e-learning can integrate exper experiential learning. So interactive activities, it's a great way to integrate them. So we want to incorporate simulations, uh, case studies, branching scenarios that allow learners to practice applying newly acquired skills in a safe but virtual environment. Also real world examples and case studies. Showcase how the learned concepts are applied in real world professional settings. Demonstrate the practical value of the e-learning experience. And project-based e-learning, and uh, I like that the most. So consider incorporating project-based learning opportunities where learners can actually apply their knowledge to solve real world problems to create something tangible, something that they can use to showcase as a project. So we've explored how e-learning can cater to adult learners' self-directedness and experiential experiences. So now let's dive, uh, let's actually dive into specific design strategies to keep adult learners engaged and motivated throughout their um, e-learning journey. So here are three strategies to consider. Adult learners often have limited time and they struggle with information over learners talked about it. So microlearning and nano learning often um, offer a very powerful uh, solution. So this involves breaking down content into bite-sized modules, usually like one objective per module, uh, typically ranging from like just a few minutes to a half hour for microlearning, um, and mere seconds to a few minutes for nano learn. So if you want to cover like one objective, sometimes it can just be a matter of seconds. Um, so some of the benefits of micro learning for adults include increased focus of, and retention, flexibility, accessibility, and of course, targeted learning. So imagine an e-learning course on cybersecurity security for a busy uh, IT professional, let's say. So micro-learning modules could focus on specific threats like um, password management, for example. So... Uh, Throughout this presentation, um, we've explored various strategies for designing e-learning experiences that cater to adult learning specific needs and preferences. 
So let's just briefly summarize uh, some of the key takeaways um, to enhance adult learner engagement. So micro learning and um, nano learning. Uh, real world scenarios and case study, interactive activities and assessments. Uh, all of these things, they will actually help you create better e-learning experience for your adult, adult learners. And here are two additional uh, design tips to consider. Adult learners have diverse backgrounds and needs. So consider offering personalized learning paths. So this adaptive learning path can um, actually be adjusted based on individual uh, performance and knowledge gaps. So and that will help you ensure um, the focus on the areas that adult learners need the most. So for example, an e-learning course of software training could offer different learning paths for beginners, intermediate users, and advanced users. And adult learners have very different preferences. So incorporate incorporating variety in uh, like content delivery is very important. So we want to include text-based content, multimedia elements like videos, animations, infographic. And we also want to include some uh, audio lectures or podcasts for learners who just uh, like to multitask and learn how to go. Now, now let me share a project I recently worked on. So the company um, had like a sales team that was required to complete an e-learning course, but they consistently underperformed on product knowledge assessments. And that's why uh, their supervisors wanted them to complete that course. And the course completion rate was very low and many salespeople actually skipped modules and abandoned the training altogether. So uh, the company, actually uh, wanted me to analyze the learner's needs and revamp their e-learning strategy. So to do that, uh, we actually conducted surveys. We did focus groups uh, with the sales team. So because at first we wanted to understand their learning preferences and challenges. And here's what we found. Uh, salespeople preferred short bite-sized learning. Uh, modules over lengthy lectures. They wanted real world examples and case studies to connect product uh, knowledge uh, to sales scenarios. Interactive activities and gamified elements were highly desired for engagement and knowledge retention. They also wanted to be able to access training on the go. So based on the needs analysis, we implemented the following changes. Uh, so microlearning modules, real world uh, uh, with real world focus. So each module actually incorporated videos, uh, video testimonials from successful salespeople using the new products and case studies um, of real world uh, sales uh, scenarios. Uh, we also incorporated- I'm so sorry to interrupt product. you, Marina. I'm so super sorry. We have about three minutes left until the end of the session. So I just wanted to let you know that it could be a good idea to slowly move to the conclusions. Okay, sounds good. Okay, um, so uh, as a result of this uh, training that we put together, the new training, um, we revamped the strategy completely and the company noticed increased in knowledge retention, boosted engagement and improved sales performance. So that's why it was really important to conduct the needs analysis first. So let's move to the conclusion. <laughs> So um, today I just covered uh, very briefly the analysis, needs analysis and e-learning, but in my instructional design for e-learning program, I actually cover everything related to needs analysis, adult learning theory, design and engaging courses, motivational learning experience, and so on. And the program includes lots of other topics that instructional designers need to be successful. It's a completely asynchronous program and you can have unlimited access to it. So so when the updates come out, they will automatically appear in your account. Right now, the price for the entire program is $297, but we created a special code for you so that you can uh, 
because you're part of this conference and it's 50% off a discount right now. And it includes more than 10 hours of training uh, on everything that instructional designers need to know. And additionally, you'll get lots of downloadable workbooks, templates, supplementary materials, access to the discussion board where you can ask questions and I personally answer them. And in addition, as a thank you for participating in this conference, I'm, I'm adding an extra bonus to this, a free chat GPT practical guide for e-learning professionals. And the guide contains almost 40 pages of content that will help you with your needs analysis, scripting, uh, writing effective scenarios, creating learning assessments, interactivity, and so on. So be sure to take advantage of that 50% discount and the bonus. All right. Okay. Do you have any questions? Marina, okay. thank you so much. We actually do have some questions. I'm just only scared that we will have to complete our session right now because very unfortunately, um, we have our next speakers coming up. But would you please be so kind to maybe stay with us for a little longer in the chat and take some of those questions there? Sure, definitely. Yeah, I'm happy to take them. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you inside my program. But also, if you have any questions, you can always reach me. Um, here is I think there is my email. Right, it's right there. So you can always send me an email, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. But right. I'll stay in questions now as well. Yeah, super. I will be looking forward to getting those answers in the chat. And I'm saying see you soon at another Ice Spring conference, Marina. Thank you very much, as always, thank for you. your insightful thank input. You. And, thank you. And thanks so much for having me. Thank you.